one of the fundamentals of Jewish philosophy is that we really can't do anything. It's all Hashem. It's only one thing we ever do. We choose. Right, you want to lift your arm. How do you lift your arm? You're sending a message. All right, the brain's sending a message. And yeah, everything happens that makes your arm go up. All you ever do is choose. All of life is just about choices. Some choices affect you short term. Some choices affect you long term. Some choices make a, a difference to whom you're going to be. And some choices, all right, what's the difference? When we talk about deep, big decisions in life, we recognize that we're making a decision that is going to affect you for the rest of your life and in something that really makes a difference. Simple, right? What's the problem? You know, life is all about making choices, making the right choices, not getting confused, but the way we were created The human psyche is such that there are so many different factors that are running around in our brains pulling us in different directions. So how do you decide? First and foremost, you got to go and sort out all these factors and ask yourself, which of these is really fundamental and which of these is trivial? Most human beings make the most important decisions of their lives on the basis of stuff that is just trivial. Perhaps meaningful, that, meaningful for them at the moment, but for real, trivial. That's the way we are. You know, for kids, of course it's that way. The process of maturing is to understand what's important and what isn't. Kid has a toothache. Gotta go to the dentist. He hears the noise of the drill. My tooth doesn't hurt anymore. Health. Hell, how many people just make a mess of themselves physically? Because things taste good. I mean, relative to how long you're going to live, your sweet tooth really should be playing a role. All right, so I don't want to make this sound too mature. But when you're deciding... You decide at this point in your lives, what are you going to do next year, for example? I'm sure there are so many factors that you're thinking about where if you only allowed yourself to sober up a little bit, 
relative to what this decision really involves. These things are trivial. You gotta make choices. Talk about this maturity business. Come on. Intelligent human beings. Intelligent human beings. Make decisions in life that affect their families, that affect their relationship with their kids. And the decisions don't really reflect what I would say the priority that one would have in a relationship with kids. Now, a simple example. Simple example for firm people. What's more important? Your money or your kids? So what if you move to a place that'll be good for your business? Less of an issue these days, but but you know bad for your kids. Or get yourself involved in something that you know will leave no time for a relationship with your kids. How many people make such decisions? How many, how many fathers become absentee fathers? Because they're a livelihood. Do they really believe that their money is more important than their kids? If they have to put it in so many words, they would do that? But we don't think of that. We don't think of it in those terms. You have to decide what are priorities in your life. What do you want to look like? What are the values that you want to share with your kids? And by the way, uh, kids don't learn from your lectures. It's nice to say it's our Torah at the table. But what you're really teaching your kids is the way you live. Not so much what you talk about. got to make sure that you're making big decisions on the basis of the important relevant factors and not on the basis of trivia, relative trivia. Making a living is not trivial, but it's relatively trivial. If you have a choice of making a, making a better living or worse, it's nice to have lots of money, but how does that compare to a healthy marriage? How does that compare to a relationship with one's kids? A second factor, aside from the issue of, of making big decisions on the basis of trivia, is assumptions. Many of our assumptions are based on stereotyping, are based on particular experiences, You assume that if you take a certain path, you'll be happy. Is it really so? Who is happy? Do you know? I would hope, for example, the word yeshiva. I don't know what it felt like to you before you came here and what it feels like to you now.
So I don't know what your experiences were like. You know, there's a stereotype. Yeshiva means a bunch of old rabbis saying things that are irrelevant to your lives. Tell you to be from and learn Musar. Perhaps you thought of yeshiva as a summer camp experience for a whole year. I would hope, I would hope that you now associate yeshiva with growth. I would hope so. First, growing up, understanding yourself, becoming self-aware. Being honest with yourself, developing a sense of integrity, not just saying what everybody says, not just grabbing the first cliche that comes to mind. Growth means taking responsibility for yourself. And then above all, that this word, this word growth and this word responsibility have positive connotations. And don't just make your eyes roll. I hope so. Aish is a happy place. Happy, it's fun. The most important demands we make on you is that you really grow. And once again, first and foremost, First and foremost, that you take responsibility for who you are. And all of this within the context, the context of Torah, which is not just a bunch of rules you got to keep if you want to identify orthodox or pretend that you keep. But this is reality. This is what quality of life is really all about. The creator of heaven and earth, Taylor made this for his chosen people. It is the best quality of life in this world and for all of eternity. And really so. I would hope that you understand that, and that's what you feel about Yeshiva. Maybe it's a little too much. Maybe I'm expecting too much. Maybe not. Maybe you learned here about what real relationships are like. What it means to care for one another, to be committed to one another. And perhaps what you learned here is that there really is a creator. And it's not just a matter of tradition. And I would hope that the values you learned here now give you a much more accurate, sober set of priorities. Here's Hashem. You have long lives ahead of you. You want families. You want to live for something that you're proud of. You want to be able to do the things that make you believe in yourself and not the opposite. Make sure that when you're making big decisions that will affect your future, these things stand out. Mature people understand that social climbing, social climbing is, it's empty and phony. 
and who really cares anyway? Life is about what's real. Make sure you're thinking that way. That's the message. Make your decisions on the basis of what counts. And make sure you're informed and not making assumptions. Are there any questions? Yeah. You mentioned someone choosing to make more light of themselves and have kids. They possibly think of a measurement that doing this kids a um, healthier, more wealthy life will also be better for them. Any kid will tell you he'd rather have time with his father than money, than than more games as kids. He'd rather have more time with dad than with than with toys. The the latest you know, the 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 the, the latest whatever it is. You know, he'd rather his father than the robot. Everyone will tell you that. And by the way, kids would rather have parents having a, a good relationship also than any robot. <laughs> and if you're just providing them with the money, but you're an absentee father and husband, your kids grow crippled. You can spend a lot of money on therapy. You're better off with less money and no therapy. <laughs> yeah? Does Rishi have any advice for balancing responsibilities as a father and also as a person of Torah, but also making money for his family? Um, you know, every, situ <laughs> every, every, every situation is different. You got to make a decent living, but when you make a decision of, you know, how am I going to make big bucks? Uh, and and you know that that's going to involve and that that that's going to involve even being away from home or just not being there in terms of your mind, and that's not the way you go. By the way, by the way, you make big money today without putting your whole head into it. The world has changed. There's a, there's bracha. There's bracha in the world. You got to play the game right. You know you got to know how to make money. <laughs> yeah. Um, so long as you're here, so long as you're here, I would suggest that you speak to the rebbeim that you feel you're close to and they care about you. And, and, and let me let me just say something. I don't think that our rebbeim are just party line people. I think you're blessed here. We don't give the the rebbeim rules of what they're allowed to tell you and what not. And I really think, I really really think that that. They really care about you. They care about you and your future more than anything else. And would never give you advice, would never give you advice that they didn't think is the best thing for you in, in the real sense, understanding who you are and who you can be. You know, whether or not it sounds like the, uh, the thing that the Rebbe is supposed to tell. Yeah. There's something to keep, you know, keep this message clear as we get older. Um, one thing I can tell you, if you make the wrong decisions, you'll have reminders in front of you all the time. There are so many people walking the streets that are filled with regret. I'd say they get a real taste of what Gehenna is going to be like. Real deep felt regret. I don't know if you ever made a decision that you really regret it later, like for days you're, 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 you're you just don't know what to do with yourself. You make the wrong decision and you realize it. It's so painful. Realizing you're on a trajectory, whom you could have been and who you ended up turning out to be. Yeah. Um, does comfortability sound like a factor to consider when you make a decision, especially big ones? I mean, uh, in what sense? Yeah, like because of your past, you're more comfortable with making certain decisions, uh, even though uh, I mean, it might not be 
comfortability is usually uh, it's usually the the uh, um, it's usually the most destructive <laughs> in terms that we the human being will choose comfort over anything. Comfort doesn't mean physical comfort necessarily, emotional comfort. The fact that you're comfortable with something means that it's kind of hard to break away from that. I'm not saying that one has to jump out of their comfort zone, take drastic steps. You know, you got to do it piece by piece. But you know something's right, forget about what you're comfortable with. Yes, it's got to be something that's you. But if all you do is what's comfortable, you never get anywhere. By the way, that's even true in business. People that are stuck, that are stuck doing business the way, the way they always did. In today's fast-moving world, that is a, a guarantee for failure. Comfort is the. Comfort is is. Uh, Yeah, it's the least important thing on your list. Yeah. How can a person choose between things being positive and beneficial at the same time? You got to weigh out the merits, the strengths, and the expense, and then decide which one's better and which one will I have to pay for in a way I can't, I can't afford. You know, write it out. Write it out and weigh, weigh the two out. Um, you're right. There's, there's guilt and there's regret. <laughs> guilt, guilt is is just gets you down and doesn't allow it does not allow you to pick up the pieces and move on. Regret teaches you a lot and you learn from your mistakes if you still have the opportunity. Um, if you find that because of of your feelings of what you're not sure if it's regret or guilt, because of that you're less productive, then you know it's yet Sahara. I'll say it in other words, when you regret and as a result of that, you actually do something, that's great. The, the, the typical guilt, the typical uh, guilt uh, 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 um, mentality is, is that you can't really do all that much. You know, you end up being less productive. You just feel so bad about yourself. You, you, you don't feel like doing a thing. Regret, regret can be energizing. If you look at a tzaddik and das Torah as some kind of ruach hakodesh, um, we're not into that. It may be true, but that's not the responsible way of dealing with it. If you're talking about discussing with somebody that doesn't know you, even if he's really big, it's probably a mistake because he doesn't understand your question. He doesn't understand your background. He doesn't understand so many different factors. If you're talking about someone that perhaps is not as big, but knows you well, He'll get the question. You know, theoretically, if the bigger person understood the question, he'd give you a better answer. But how are you going to communicate to that, that, that to him? When, when it's try, trying to like, describe a whole culture to him, can you articulate your culture? You know, there's so much that we take for granted. It's very hard to articulate. Which means that when we're talking about someone that, that really is distant from the way you live, the odds are he doesn't understand you, and the question he's dealing with is a totally different one. Okay, good luck.